Well, today on Chuck and Dirt, we're back at the uh, 1718 homestead. Uh, that beautiful stonework barn. I wish I could show it to you, it's so pretty. Uh, but that's over there, and this is the back acreage. It goes pretty far, it goes off into the woods. It also abuts a, a town property that used to be an old Girl Scout uh, camp. Uh, definitely be worth checking that out at some point, but I think we'll have plenty to do here. Definitely I'm going to ask the owner if this tall grass here ever gets cut. Because you can't swing a detector in that. This is uh, this scruffy stuff. We can work in this little area here. Um, but uh, there's also plenty more to do. You know, I found that uh, that pocket watch uh, fragment, the uh, speed regulator plate, uh, in a previous episode. So we'll definitely uh, head back around to the front of the house and do a little bit more poking out there. I know it's a blanket of iron, and it's really, really hard to get through, but it'd be nice to see if we could recover a few more pieces of that pocket watch. It just seems a little weird that the only thing that would be there would be the speed regulator plate, right? So, we'll look, we'll look. Anyway, there's a lot to do. Let's get to it. History awaits. Alright, we are on the front lawn of 1718 property. Uh, got a sweet 82 at 6. Pulled two nails out of the hole. And now I see the rim of a silver coin. Let's not get too excited. It's small, it's reeded, so I'm sure it's a dime. Um, could be a seated dime. We don't know for sure, but let's find out together. All I see is the rim. I haven't looked at it yet. Come have a look at it with me. Look at that, huh? See the reading. You see the beautiful silver shine. It's a good, um, maybe five inches down. Shut that thing off. All right. All right, I'm going to pry it out without scuffing it. And we are going to see it together. Could just be a rosy or a murk, but it could be a seated dime. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Okay, that's the fashies on the back of a murk dime, I'm sure of it. Yep. Yeah. So it's a murk. Which means the oldest it could be is in the 19 teens. Still, that's a nice little find. Let's flip it. Let's flip it in a way that actually helps. I've done this before. I'm a professional. That's why I'm just throwing my stuff around here. Okay, we got a year. 1927. So that's uh, that's a beautiful little dime. It's a nice piece of history. It's not old enough, though. It's not the history we're looking for. Let's uh, let's give it the old chuck and squirt treatment here. Uh, looks like there's a scrap piece of plastic here, so we can just use we can just use that. I'll put the dime right on that. Get out our trusty chuck and squirt. Oh boy, which is going to need a refill. Here we go. Ready? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's coming nice and clean. Oh yeah, look at that. There it is. 1927, baby. A lovely piece of early 20th century silver. It's a very nice find, but we're hoping for something a little older. Nonetheless, any day you find silver is a good day, and that makes today a good day. <laughs> well, this is cute. Um, I wasn't expecting this. I uh, had a 65 somewhat close to the surface. Figured, pull tab, it's usually what it is. No, it's a kitty. Look at how cute it is! Now I don't know if that was like a bracelet charm or something like that, 
but I did uh, you know use a little chuck and squirt on it and right there let's uh, see if we can do it this way right there you can see it says bow sterling so that is a little sterling silver kitty cat uh, I don't know what it was I don't see any attachment points for like a bracelet or uh, you know an earring or anything like that it's obviously some sort of little silver kitty cat it must have been a decoration for something perhaps a uh, charm bracelet or who knows I mean it could have hung from a cat's collar seems unlikely given how likely it is a cat would lose it but uh, that is really cute a little tiny piece of treasure any day you find silver is a good day and also the use of the word sterling as opposed to 925 is an indication of age more recent sterling jewelry will say 925 on it use of the word sterling indicates it's a little older I don't think it's very old but it's older uh, it's not like a recent item I don't think anyway but this is pretty cool that's a first that's definitely a first for me <laughs> Any day you find silver is a good day, and we are on the board twice now. Alright, let's see if we can find something really old. Well, I took a journey off into the back lot. Not having a lot of luck back there. Ground doesn't sound right. It's too quiet. Uh, it should be choked with iron. Um, I don't know. I must not be in the right spot. It's just... Now, it's supposed to be a dairy farm, right? No milk can lids. No mason jar lids. No, no cow tags. Not a single cow tag. I should have like 20 in my bag by now. It's very strange. I don't know. I have a funny feeling something was done to that backfield. You know, maybe after this place was a... Um, dairy farm and was converted for other use maybe someone went back there with a plow and or a bulldozer and bulldozed the field and brought in new, new soil or something because it sounds new it doesn't sound like an old place should. I mean I've hunted properties from the 1700s before so I'm having trouble turning up anything that indicates the age of this place as being any place anywhere older than like the 1880s um, until now, I think this gets us to the 1860s, but I'm not sure. Have a look. That, my lovelies, is a little lead ball, uh, also known as a musket ball. It's very, very crude. I'm sure it's been you know, eating away at in the ground a little bit, but that's definitely a musket ball, and if I had to guess, I would say 52 caliber, which would put it right around the Civil War. Uh, Red War musket ball, you know, from the 1700s, would be much bigger. It would be like a 69 caliber. caliber. But, there it is. Um, when I get home, uh, this coming weekend I can use my calipers and uh, get a more accurate measurement of the caliber but I would guess it's about a 52 cal musket ball and if it is uh, that puts it somewhere in the middle 1800s not one flat button not one something's not right I haven't quite figured out what it is something's something's not something's amiss Something's amiss. But I'll get to the bottom of it. And you can get to the bottom of it with me. I am getting tired, but I'm going to putter for a little bit longer. So uh, let's see if we can turn up something else. Maybe something from the 1700s. This property supposedly was built in the 1720s. So there ought to be something here. All right, let's keep looking. Well, I am getting tired. It is getting late. I think it's time to clear out of here. Um, I think we'll probably wait until this back pasture gets mowed uh, before we try again. It's very, very hard working out there. Um, 
ground didn't really sound right, but maybe if we clear off that uh, clear off that grass, uh, we'll have better coverage. I think I've uh, hit around the barn pretty closely, around the front of the house pretty closely. There's probably still more there. It's a blanket of iron, of course, but uh, yeah, I think I've found what is to be found there anyway. So hopefully, uh, uh, the owner said he was going to mow this lawn in a couple of weeks. So in a couple of weeks' time, we'll come back. We'll hit that back and. And maybe we'll try the uh, Girl Scout camp out here. Um, I think that was active in the 40s, so we may find something there. Uh, let's uh, let's go over what we found today. All right, so uh, let's see. We got some clad. We got a buck there, uh, dime, nickel, all modern. Uh, four pennies, well, three and a half. Zinc just doesn't keep in the ground. That one's weedy. Uh, so that's I don't know, dollar eighteen, something like that. Uh, we picked up uh, this uh, pen knife, not pen knife, pocket knife. Looks like a scout knife, looks like it dates to about the 50s. Uh, it's severely corroded. I probably will not keep that. I'll probably just ditch it. But it was an interesting find. Uh, we had this. Hmm. Can't make up my mind about this. It could be something partial knee buckle or something, but I don't know. It could just be a piece of wire that's been bent. Going to have to spend some time studying this one under a magnifying glass and looking some stuff up. Uh, for now, a potential buckle portion. Uh, we've got a little bit of an oyster shell. We've got a little tiny piece of ceramic. That is the only ceramic I found all day, if you can believe that. Uh, we've got a matchbox car. Uh, that's a dog license. It dates to 1961. Can't show you the other side. It's got the town name on it. Uh, you can check the high-res photo. Uh, that's a finial of some kind. Went on the end of something or other. Maybe, uh, you know, I don't know what it went to. But it's just a little copper finial. Uh, this is a band. I'm not sure what it went around. Has some numbers on it. 1415. Some other numbers. Uh, that appears to be the tail fin from a model 747. I'm guessing because of the split rudder there. Um, and uh, we had the musket ball, that was really probably the find of the day as far as history goes. Uh, and then we had this lovely little sterling silver kitty, the Bauer Sterling Kitty, and this 1927P Mercury Dime. So we did get on the board with a little silver, uh, but the oldest relic there would probably be uh, the round ball. Um, uh, 52 cal, probably... Well, it could go all the way back to the Civil War, but it could be more recent. I mean, it could be 1880s. So, you know, I think the oldest relic we found on this property thus far has been that musket ball and the uh, pocket watch speed regulator plate. And uh, they're both from the same era. So, so far, nothing has turned up here older than the 1880s. Um, and no flat buttons. It's very strange. Not a single flat button. Anyway, uh, that's about it for today. I'm tuckered out. Time to split. I hope you've enjoyed this hunt. I enjoyed having you come along with me, and I will see you on the next hunt. So, <clears throat> as a follow-up, I did eventually figure out or find out what was going on with this property. Uh, I had a talk with the current landowner after visiting it a few times, a uh, couple more times I visited, I didn't film because I didn't find anything. Uh, I talked to the landowner and he talked to the previous property owner. And it turned out that the, um, in the previous property owner's family there was a teenager who was a metal detectorist. <laughs> so you've got a young, young guy, he's a teen, doesn't have anything better to do, so he's metal detecting on that property every day for years. Uh, I know they say no ground is ever hunted out, and as you can see, a couple of things did turn up here, and there may be some more, I think there might be one short clip from a future episode where I find one more thing there, but most of it is gone. That's what was going on with the ground, so, anyway, uh, even so, we still found some good stuff. Hope you enjoyed what we did find. Well, I'm back on the 1718 property today, uh, site of the old dairy farm. 
and uh, <laughs> I was here yesterday, but only for a few minutes. Uh, I, I got here for like 10 minutes, and then I realized it was an errand I was supposed to run, so I had to boogie on out of here. But before I left, I still found a, a beautiful coin. I'm going to show you that, show that to you now. And so this is an 1887 Indian head penny. Uh, looks pretty good. Came out of the ground very, very nice. And I think uh, this may be the hot spot in the yard here, at least one of the hot spots, because this is right near where I found the musket ball. And so I've returned to this hot spot today, and now we have this artifact. It's a little horseshoe. Now this horseshoe is interesting because it actually had something else with it that looks like a piece of leather. It's the same shape as the horseshoe. See that? And it looks like the horseshoe was attached to it. Like that. See that? So I'm not sure what that is. I'm not sure if that's like some sort of a separator that they put between the shoe and the hoof. Um, weird that that survived. Never seen anything like that. Um, but uh, I'll do some research on it when I get back home. Anyway, nice to be back here today and to be puttering around. I thought I had a flat button yesterday. Uh, it looked like a flatty when it came out of the ground, but then upon later cleaning it up, I think it's something else entirely, something a little more modern. Um, probably a, a small dial uh, from a, a radio, or it could be, it could be a small clock gear, not sure. But uh, yeah, not a flatty, unfortunately. But, you know, We'll see. We'll see what else comes out of the ground in this little hot spot. Not sure why this is the hot spot. I, I notice that it's all covered with wood chips. Maybe these piles of wood chips have been here for a long time, thus keeping anyone from disturbing this section of ground. And now that the wood chips have been cleared, maybe recently, um, there's things here to be found. Anyway, here we go. I'm gonna keep at it. Gee up! Detectors everywhere will tell you that it's a burden. It's a burden being so irresistible to other people. Uh, we have a lot of romantic partners in this business. And uh, it's just because of the allure of this hobby, you know. There's, there's nothing more arousing or romantically appealing than someone who comes home covered in dirt. Uh, bearing 22 cents and something rusty from the latter century. But, there is one advantage if you're a detectorist that you can apply. Something that makes you even more attractive to your partner. And that is coming home without Lyme disease. And that's why I use Deep Woods Off. <laughs> that smell! Oh my! Anyway, for the discerning detectorist who wants to come home safe and non-contagious with a person in their life. It could be a seated dime. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know when motorcycles are just going to go rolling by. We don't know for sure, but let's find out together.